Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here once again is in my garage shop. And welcome to my midweek show that I call Stumped Q&A. Uh, the purpose of this is to do a follow-up to the previous weekend's video and take this opportunity to fill in some things maybe I forgot and also to answer your questions, comments, and cheap shots. Before I start that, I do want to send a little bit of a shout out to the 800 and 24 subscribers that have subscribed to this channel in the last 90 days. Um, I discovered my analytics <laughs> for my website and was exploring and looking around and checking about the demographics about you old dudes. <laughs> Turns out most of us are, you know, are old guys. Um, but golly, I, I'm super honored that you are here. I appreciate you sharing your time with me. And with that, let's just get right down to business. So, Let's see. Um, Alan says, thank you for the vids. You're welcome, Alan. Um, Bob said "Would you uh, that he would like to see a video on replacing the headstock lock. That's the thing that we were lubricating this last week uh, without removing the headstock. I've never heard of anybody even attempting that, and I don't believe it can be done. And I don't know that I even want to try it because it's so easy to remove the headstock. So uh, it, it got me to thinking that this weekend's video upcoming, I'm going to do that. I'm going to remove the headstock. I'm going to remove the carriage. We're going to open up the headstock and we're going to talk about uh, the, the places that we need to do some oiling on the inside of the headstock. Yeah, there's probably a dozen videos out there on that topic, but I've not done one. So we're just going to go, <laughs> go ahead and do that. So thank you for putting that thought in my mind, Bob, but I have no idea whether you can replace that. Um, let's see, Norm said that he experienced a drooping table uh, at one time with his Mark V, and uh, he has either a 510 or 520. I didn't, I don't know that I recall which one it was, but uh, that, that fence system, uh, I'm sorry, that table system locks differently than the earlier models, the five model 500. And uh, so let's just take a quick look at this. Oh, that is, that is dirty as could be. Hold on a second, let's, let's make a move. So the way previous versions of the Mark V uh, fence, or why do I keep saying fence? Table tilted was you were you would loosen a lever and that would act upon one trunnion. And on the opposite side was just a simple pivot point. Well, with the 510, because not only was the table going to be bigger, but there was going to be the ability to add extensions to it. So that was going to put a lot of pressure here on this lock. They came up with this really cool system of a wedge clamping against this trunnion but then a connecting rod goes back to the other trunnion where there is also a wedge. And so basically what you have here is like a pair of calipers clamping on a, uh, on a, um, on a rotor. So we've got a fixed plate on the back and we're pushing the wedge against it. I've been asked if, I've, if I have done or will do a video on alignment. Yeah, it's gonna require some work, obviously. But uh, I will tell you with this, you don't ever lubricate this trunnion or that lock, ever, ever, ever. And so the issues uh, that Norm was having, uh, originally he thought perhaps that was it, that maybe, maybe he had, uh, had, had, had lubricated it, so he cleaned it all off, that wasn't the issue. He then scuffed up those surfaces with some sandpaper smart thinking. Maybe maybe things had, had rubbed smooth. Uh, no, that wasn't the issue. And then what he found out was he had stripped the, uh, the, the internal threads or the threads on the shaft. And so he, uh, he wound up taking it all apart, running, uh, used the pieces and parts themselves. Uh, he was able to, to get the threads back into their normal position. Now that is a replacement part that you can buy uh, from ShopSmith. You can pick them up used on eBay. And so I, I wouldn't recommend wasting a whole lot of time on that. But I, I imagine that that threaded rod is, uh, is, is, is not an inexpensive part. So anyway, uh, 
Congratulations, Norm. And we will talk about this because another issue that some people have with this, this version of the Mark V is they'll end up with a table that's not flat. And usually it has to do with an issue in alignment. And uh, so I assure you, we will do a video on that. Uh, let's see, Dennis said, can I recommend a product for lubricating? Yeah, we'll do that this weekend. I'll, I'll show you everything that I do and the products that I use. And uh, so we'll get you that, that question answered. Um, Paul, uh, age old question. Why is the ShopSmith miter slot not the standard size? Okay, let, first off, let's just admit, it benefits ShopSmith to have a unique shaped slot. Okay, right off the bat. So, you know, that, that's one thing. But how long have they had this unique shaped miter slot? Since the mid 50s. So this is nothing new. The ShopSmith equipment, Mark V, Mark VII, Mark II, uh, Mark V, 500, 505, 510, 520, and even the fabled Mark I have all had that same miter slot. Now, one of the comments that came in was from a gentleman named Kurt, and Kurt said that he purchased the Zero Play miter bar from Microjig. And I've seen it before. It's really interesting the way it adjusts, but it does in fact fit the uh, the Mark V and the the Shopsmith slot. But let's also talk about you know our our circular saw blades have an inch and a quarter hole in them, have a great big hole, and uh, that's another question that comes up is why doesn't it have a five eighths hole? Um, well, you can get a five eighths arbor. So if you want to use a saw blade with a five eighths arbor or a uh, hole, you can get the arbor to do that. You don't want to use the molder dado arbor. That's a big, long arbor that's designed for holding uh, stacks of uh, dado blades or a big, thick uh, molder head. You don't want to use that because you can't tilt your table all the way. So that, that'll end up becoming a problem for you. But there is a 5.8 saw arbor that you can buy from Shopsmith, and there's even one that is available as an aftermarket product. But there is an advantage. You get less slipping when you have a big bore, and that bore is bearing on that inch and a quarter hub, and then it's all clamped together, of course. Uh, now, is there a lot of slipping of the blade on the arbor? I don't think so. But if you were designing, if there was no standard, which there wasn't in the, in the 1950s, and you were designing and choosing a uh, saw arbor hole, you could have picked any number of bores, and uh, you can get inch and a quarter from Shopsmith. You can have other saw blade manufacturers' blades typically made with a inch and a quarter hole if you'd like that. I buy blades from um, the Forest Woodworker, too, is the one I like to, to buy. And my first one, I did have them bored out to inch and a quarter, but since then, I just go with the 5 8 Arbor. So, anyway, um, Chad, Chad, who uh, watches everything. If you don't know that, Chad watches every video on YouTube that is ShopSmith related and uh, typically is kind enough to leave a comment. He noticed in my video that I talked about a couple things that he hasn't seen covered in other videos. So um, either I have some great insight or I'm making stuff up. I'll let you decide. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that because I know that you know what's going on out there. Um, and then John had a similar problem with his miter fence rail. You know, mine was loose on one end and it was throwing off the angle. It turns out John's wasn't loose, but it was set too high. If that bar is too high or that bar is too low, it affects the movement of the, of the fence. If it's too low, it'll drag across your table and you'll notice a big gouge beginning to form and that's not good. Um, and if it's too high, it's, it's kind of wobbly around. So uh, you want it to be just right. And you can do that by adjusting the height of that bar. I appreciate everybody again for watching. Thank you so much for your questions. That makes this fun for me because it's interactive. And uh, if you have specific questions about lubricating and maintenance, uh, drop them in the comments below and maybe I'll be able to cover those this weekend. All right. So uh, that's it for me. Make it a great week. See you then.